Lord Jesus, you are. You are so faithful, Lord Jesus, you are. You are so good, Lord Jesus, you are. You are so faithful, Lord Jesus, you are. You are so good, Lord Jesus, you are. You are so faithful, Lord Jesus, you are. You are so good, Lord Jesus, you are. You are so faithful, Lord Jesus, you are. You are so good, everlasting, to everlasting, ancient out and Ain't without it. 
Jesus, you are. You are so faithful, Lord Jesus, you are. You are so good, Lord Jesus, you are. You are so faithful, Lord Jesus, you are. You are so good. You are, you are so faithful, Lord Jesus, you are, you are so good, everlasting, everlasting, ancient out I 
Lord, I'm to you. Bring an offering, Oh 
Let your river flow. Let your fire burn in. Let your river flow. Let your fire burn in. Let your river flow. Let your fire burn. Come into your presence. Lord, we worship you. Oh, Lord, I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Worship you. Worship you. Worship you. Worship you, Lord. Worship you. Worship. Worship you. Worship you. I worship you. Lord. I worship you. Worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Worship you. The beauty of your holy, the beauty of your splendor. Worship you, Lord. I worship. of your home. Oh, oh. 
majesty, creator of the heavens and earth. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Because you are worthy. You are worthy. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. In the beauty of your
your name. Oh, holy is your name, Lord. 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 Oh, holy is your name. Oh, holy is your name, Lord. Oh, holy is your name. I sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to your name. I sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in thee, Lord. In you, Lord. You are my boast. My soul shall make her boast in thee, Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let us exalt him. Let us lift his name on high. Let us exalt the Lord God Almighty, for he is worthy. He is worthy of us opening our mouth and praising him. Let us magnify his name together. Let us come into the house of the Lord and praise and worship and magnify his name together. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Super sete. Roshin and Edebabakute. Zote, let us magnify his name together. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy. Oh, magnify the Lord. It will transport you out of the realms of yourself into the realms of his glory and his presence. But you've got to open your mouth and you've got to magnify the Lord. You can't stand there and just let somebody sing a song. We're not about singing a song. We're about coming into a place in unity and worshiping the Lord, magnifying his name. We've come here to lift up the name of Jesus, to glorify his name, to worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. It's a body. It's a church coming together and pressing in to go deeper into the realms of his glory, to touch heaven, to be empowered, to be transformed by his spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. We praise you, Father. <laughs> oh, le de baka ye so te le le me shiolo le na masete. Lo baboro so karabata. Lift up your voice on high. Get out of all of your busyness and move over into the realms of His business. Magnify His name. Worship Him. Lift Him up. Oh Lord, You are worthy. Oh Lord, You are worthy. Oh Lord Jesus, You are worthy. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are worthy, creator of all things. You are worthy of the praises of your people. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this great salvation. We thank you for this great salvation wherewith you have washed us and cleansed us and set us and made us right. Oh, Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given every one of us, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, 
Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. There to Chicon and the DB, but also Katata. Russia, the development of the city of the Papa. Bushida, Mededa Babel Sote. Worship is so powerful. Worship is so powerful. It's so powerful. It's not a program. It's worship. It is power in worship. When people will come together and press in to touch God, to go deeper, and it changes, it transforms your life, it takes you to another glory, to another realm in God. You find yourself kind of like on the ups and downs and not being able to flow in the Holy Ghost. It's because you're not spending time in worship. You must worship Him. You look at King David, the apple of God's eye, the man after God's own heart, and you read the Psalms. What is the Psalms? It's a song. It's worship. It's prayer. It's praise. It's giving yourselves over to the realms of His holiness and worshiping him in his holiness. And as David worshiped, what happened when David worshiped? He began to prophesy. He began to tell of the Messiah. He began to tell of the things that were to come. Because worship leads you right over into that realm of prophesying. If you are a worshiper, you will prophesy. I don't care if you're man, woman, girl, or boy. If you will worship him, you will prophesy. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Worship takes you over into the realms of the gifts of the Spirit and the moving of the Spirit. And there is no difference between a man or woman, a boy or girl in the Spirit. We can all have the gifts of the Spirit. We can all operate in the gifts of the Spirit. And we're to all operate in the gifts of the Spirit in the body, in the church. And we're to all press in to operate in those gifts. We're not to sit back and hold on to our own life and grip it so tight that we don't move out and fulfill the calling that God has placed on every one of our lives. There, there are several people in this place that you have not pressed in to the place that you are moving in the body like Christ wants you to move into his body operating by the Holy Spirit and allowing the gifts to flow through you where you're taken out of the realm of the natural completely you don't it's not the thinking of the head you've lost your own life and you begin to operate in what God's called you to do there's calling on every person in this place there's calling there's calling on every person in this place. Some callings I know. Some callings God has spoke to me and he's made it very clear to me. And I, and, I, and, and I sit and I watch and I see people let it go by. They're letting those giftings and those callings go by. In their life and their life goes by. And God will use you. If you will just say, okay, God, here I am. It's not easy. It's not easy for me to stand up here. Sometimes, you know, for a lot of people, well, uh, there's a lot of people that like to talk in front of people. They like to do that. I don't like to. So it's not, it's always a denying of myself. Because it's not what I would prefer to do. But I, I want everything he has for me. And I'm just given over to him. And one day he came and he just touched me with the fire of his glory and it was like fire shut up in my bones and I couldn't sit still any longer and I jumped up in the middle of the church when the preacher had a quiet moment and I began to prophesy and it just came out of me because I couldn't hold it in any longer because in the secret place in the secret place with God I was caught up in the realms of his glory and he began to manifest himself to me and he will do the same to you if you will stop holding on to your life. If you will stop counting your life so dear to yourself. He'll do the same thing to you. And you will begin to function in gifts that you didn't know you even had. And there's, there's several people here, you know you have gifts. 
and you know God uses you and you know you hear from God and you're not pressing into that, now I'm exhorting you today. We're going to get up and we're going to be the army. We're going to be the army of Joel. We're going to run through a troop. We're going to leap over a wall. There's nothing that is going to stop us. We're going to come out and we're going to be the church that Jesus died and he paid for. We're not going to hear about it anymore. We're going to live about it. We're going to walk about it. We're going to let him be glorified in us and through us. We're going to let him be manifested in the church like never before. We are going to be that church Jesus Christ paid for, paid in full. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wednesday night, the Lord had just put so on me about how, you know, we've been reading about the children of Israel, right? And we look at how they didn't go up and possess the land. God says, I give you the land. It's yours. Go up and possess it. And we, and we go on in the scripture, and they still had not completely possessed the land. They didn't fully drive out. The, the inhabitants of the land. God told them to drive them all out, to get them out of there, to move them out, to totally and completely possess the land. And we look at that and we get, we're, we're aggravated as we're reading it because we're just like, God told them to do it. Now they had to take the sword and they had to go in and they had to fight to possess that land, right? That was their part. But God said, I'll go before you. He said, the land is yours. I have given it to you. I have given it to you. And he has given to us these great and precious promises. He has given to us this glorious realm of heaven. He has taken us out of this natural life and he set us up into heavenly places in him in Christ Jesus. And have we gone in and fully possessed our land? He has given it to us. Have we possessed it? Have we taken a hold of it? Are we sitting by and letting our life go by and not possessing? Are we, are we looking and doing those things that the children of Israel do, did that we got aggravated about? Are we doing the same thing and not possessing all that God has for us because we're too busy? We're too busy living our own lives. Maybe all of us need to just rotate into the church of China where they're training them up to go out and give their life for Jesus. Not count their life dear to themselves, but go out prepared to die for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go into the toughest places. They're in Syria. They're in Iraq right now. They're in, they're in Iran right now. They're in Israel. They're all over places where it is not safe for them to be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're in North Korea. How many's ready to go to North Korea? You got the power of God moving on the inside of you and you're ready to go in there and preach the gospel. That's where we want to be. We want to be on edge, giving ourselves daily and continually to the gifting and the calling that he has placed upon our life, to all that he has told us that we can possess in him. Live it and walk it out. Not having to relay the foundations of the principles of the doctrine of faith to God and repentance from dead works. Let's move on and let's start building the house of God. Let's stop staying stuck and having to repent, but let's be, let's stand up and let's be the mighty women and men of God that he has chosen in this earth today to change the earth. This many people right in here in this room can change the earth if you will give yourself over to God. Amen. If you will totally let go of your life, abandon your life, yes. and give yourself over to the realms of His Spirit and the realms of His glory, you can be an earth shaker, history maker. I tell you what, the, the things that I didn't want to do that I have done have been the, the most exciting, glorious things that have ever happened in my life. The things that I thought that I could not do, but I said, here I am, a yielded vessel, separated unto you. And then I find myself and I'm like, in the place where God has called me and I begin to pinch myself, am I really here? Is this real? Am I getting to do this for you, Lord? 
Hallelujah. That's what he'll do. He'll take you. He doesn't care what you look like. He doesn't care anything about your personality. He'll change all of that. He'll beautify the meek with salvation. You can be ugly and he'll make you pretty. It doesn't matter about you. Don't look at you. But look unto Jesus. He's the author. He's the finisher of your faith. He is the beginning and he is the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just hear the Spirit saying, rise up, church. Rise up, church. Rise up, people. Rise up. And I could just start calling every one of your names, rise up. Rise up, it is time. The Lord is saying it is time. It is time. There's all power and authority in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't have to be held under the powers of darkness and sin and shame and depravity any longer. All you have to do is call upon the name of Jesus. And he has the keeping power if you will stay in that keeping power. All you have to do is commit it unto him. And he will bring it to pass. If you have had a besetting sin, a weight that has so easily beset you, then you need to just bring it to Jesus and lay it down at the altar right now. You need to just bring it to Jesus and lay it down before him and say, I lay this down before you, Father. I am never, I am never walking in that path again. I am not going to allow something to keep me out of the glorious realm of heaven any longer. I'm not going to allow something that if Jesus was to come at any moment, for which he could come at any moment, all the scripture has been fulfilled to the point that Jesus could come at any moment. We see the day and we see the hour approaching right now. And you don't want to allow anything to continue in your life. And to take place in your life at that moment that the trumpet was sound. And you be left behind to go through that torture and that misery. Because look, if you can't stand now, when the church is here and the strength of, of the church is here and the praying saints are here to hold back the hordes of hell, if you can't stand now in who God is, then you will not stand then. Very likely... You know, maybe some people will wake up and say, yeah, it's really real. There's really, you know, because, you know, the whole reason that you would allow sin in your life is because there's not the fear of the Lord and there's not the fear of the Lord because you really don't believe. You really don't believe God's word's true. Because you've heard it and you've been lulled to sleep by the enemy. He has a little rocking basket for everybody that will allow themselves to get rocked and lulled to sleep. We don't want to be the sleeping church. We want to be the church that rises up. We don't want to be the sleeping church. We don't want to sleep in any way. Not one moment. Not one moment do we want to allow ourselves to be rocked by the enemy to sleep. I'm going to tell you what, if you are not fulfilling what God's called you to do, and at different ages in the spirit, there are different dimensions of the calling. But if you're not stepping into it and you're not fulfilling it, you're rocked to sleep. The enemy is lullabying you and going, it's okay, you know, someday. Or whatever, whatever the deceiving things are, you're being rocked to sleep. You want to wake up? Amen. Wake up, shake yourself. Amen. Put on his strength. Put on the strength of the Almighty. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. There are people standing in this place today that are on their way to hell. And you want to wake up. I'm not talking about the church as a whole because we've got hungry, passionate people in this place. But you haven't possessed all of your inheritance. And the Lord said, possess your inheritance. Fear not. 
Fear not. Do not be dismayed. Do not be afraid. Do not allow the enemy to condemn you and push you back. Say, I may have failed yesterday, but the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses me from all sin. And I'm going to take a hold of these precious things that God has given me. And I'm going to rise up. I'm going to rise up now. Yeah. Not thinking about the past. Counting the past as done. Forgetting about those things which are behind and pressing on. Today we're going to rise up and we're going to press on toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We're not going to sleep. We're not going to slumber. And I, I thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' name, people that have held on to their life and tiptoed around on God. That demon power of darkness, to agree with me, saints, that demon power of darkness is broken off the lives of the people that are in this place right now. I bind the powers of darkness together with the saints of God in this place in Jesus' name. Awake! Awake out of your sleep and out of your slumber and arise. Arise unto God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In one moment of you letting go and saying, I take the blood of Jesus Christ to come and cleanse me and wash me of all my sins. You are a saint set apart unto God, now living in heavenly places. Now, don't go to sleep. Stay awake. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. Be diligent. Give all diligence to have these things. And we have to look at 2 Peter chapter 1 real quick. Seeing I'm on this message. Oh, hallelujah. Seeing the Holy Spirit is crying out to his church and saying, church, awake and be diligent. Awake out of your sleep. Awake out of your slumber. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together 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 in this place yes. we're going to glorify the name of jesus yes. we're going to lift up the name of jesus we're going to have the change today tonight to, oh father now now in jesus name now in jesus name hindrance is broken the mind blinding spirits of satan that would try to stick his green long fingernailed ugly fingers in your ears all the way down to where there is no possible way to hear. I pull those things out in the name of Jesus. Together, as saints of God, we pull those slimy fingers out of your ear right now. We love you, and we want to see you taken over into the realms of glory, into the realms of his presence. And we break the powers of darkness that would blind your eyes and stop you from hearing. We're not going to be just hearers of the word, but we're going to be doers of the That's word. Right. We're going to live this, and we're going to walk it out. Hallelujah. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. He did everything for us. He's done everything for us, saints. He has done it all. He paid the price on Calvary. He washed us. He cleansed us. And then he filled us with the Holy Ghost to follow him, to walk it out. The Holy Ghost is going to show us Jesus. And we're going to walk it out. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, by the Spirit. We're going to walk it out by the Spirit, not by our ability. Man's ability got you stuck in the law. And every person in this place would already be stoned, left under a pile of rocks. But the mercy of Jesus Christ and repentance. We thank you, Father, for your mercy. We thank you, Father, for your mercy. That you continually give us another chance, oh God. That if, not when... We're not living over there and when we sin every day. But if we were to slip into sin because the enemy would bring deception, if we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, oh, glory to your name, Lord. You are so good. And I tell you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Forget about it because he washes and he cleanses whiter than snow. He's the fuller soap. Oh, he's the refining fire. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Forget about the past. Move forward into the future. This is an hour to live glorious for God. This is an hour to live and let your light shine for the almighty King of kings and the Lord of lords and let him take the meager little old person that we are and let his glory be seen in us throughout the nations of the world today. That's right. 
And Kristen, you're going to step into it. You're just going over. You're not holding on to your life anymore. You're at the brink and you just, you jump, you jump in the cliff. You're just going. You're just going after it. You're not going to hold on any longer that anointing that God has placed in your life. That power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is there. You're not going to shove it down anymore. It's going to be like fire shut up in your bones and you're, not, you're just going to pop up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So many in this place, it's just you pressing in. It's just, it's, it's just like what I was saying when we come in and we begin to worship or when we worship at home and we get launched over into that realms of glory. But it's that place of worship. It's that place of giving yourself over into worship. Oh, Hallelujah that takes you over into the realms of glory, into the realms of his presence. Uh, and, 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 and it's just like, you know, just like how Saul, you know, was the example of being taken over into another man. And, and they said, now is Saul a prophet? Because the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and changed him out of that shy, quiet man. And this is the keeping power. You step out and you get, you get smacked because you step out. I mean, some people get smacked because they come to church. That's their big battle, making it to church. And so then they get smacked because they come to church. Look, just begin to worship him. Just tell Jesus you love him. Have that personal relationship. I'm going to tell you, if you're not, having, if you're not worshiping Jesus every day, you're not in that personal relationship. If you're not continually worshiping him, you don't have to stop your job and worship him. You can live the light of the glory of Jesus Christ on your job as the glory is just manifested in you. And you're just praising Jesus and people coming by and going, why do you glow? Why, why do you look so happy? You know, because it's a whole lot more of how you live than what you say. You can say a lot, but how do you live? My mother used to say, she goes, I don't care if people are swinging from the chandeliers. She goes, when they get down, and that meant she, you know, I don't care how excited you are in church. She goes, when you get down, I want to see a work done in you. I want to see how straight you're walking. That's right. Because when God touches you, you know, some people, you know, God touches them and then there's a manifestation of the Spirit. And that's good, that happens. And God changes them. But some people just join in. And grab the chandelier and want to swing too. The Lord, but my mom would say, it doesn't matter what the manifestation is. If you're jumping up and down, screaming, laughing, you know, you're joyous or whatever in the service, how, how you live in. Uh -huh. I want to see how you're going to live. Yeah. It's about how we walk when he touches us. But you know what? We have to stay there. It's a continually every day, every moment relationship, fellowship with God. Do you want relationship yes. with God? Yes. Do you want fellowship with God? Then I tell you what, you won't be sitting in a church ever resisting the Holy Ghost, but you'll be just saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Oh, glory to your name. Here I am, Father. Change me, use me. Lord, I say yes. I say yes. I yield everything. I'm not holding on to anything. I yield it all right now. Father, it's not my life. It's yours. I let go right now. I take my fingers that are so pried on the steering wheel of my life that you can see white knuckles. And I release them to you. See, it's just yielding ourselves, and then he takes over and he does everything else. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about how, how, how to do it and how to walk it out. You just say, Father, here I am. I present this hunk of clay to you. That's right. You've done the work, now you perform it. I just yield. I yield to you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise you. And you, you can begin. You begin can begin with the gift that God's placed in you by opening your mouth and just praying when, you, when you're in a store or when you're out and about doing things. Or a God, you know, a lot of us have been with our unsaved family. There's a lot of people here with unsaved family. And, and how you're an example there and you're just praying, Father, I don't want to speak out of my head, but I want to speak by the Spirit. Father, let your words pierce the heart. Father, who are you sending me to? What, who do you want me to speak to? What do you want me to say? 
And as you begin to step out and begin to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people, that increases and increases in your life and it gets stronger. And you find yourself over in that realm of glory continually as you surrender your life to do that. Every morning it should be, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Who do you want me to speak to? Who do you want me to be a strength to? How do you want me to walk this out? Father, prepare me. A lot of times the Lord has given me words early in the morning or in the middle of the night, and it's like been just fire in my, in my bones, or I've been seeking the Lord for someone, but you know, regardless, the Lord gave me something. And, you know, I didn't have a church all the time to go and preach it at. And so I would look and begin and just wait on God for who I was supposed to give that word to. And boom, you know, maybe three or four people, you know, this is what the Lord's saying. You know, people call me or I see people or whatever. And, it, and, and there it goes. There goes the Holy Ghost speaking right out of you. It doesn't have to be up here. It should be our daily life everywhere we go. Because people need Jesus. People need Jesus. You know, and as there's people that I'm continually ministering to and talking to and, and have made it a point to go and get in their grocery line or, or, or find them or whatever and preach the gospel to them, you know, I look and I'm just like, there has nobody, there's nobody that's ever fought for this soul. They have no clue. They have no understanding. And I'm saying, Holy Spirit, use my mouth to pierce their heart to cause them to hear. And it may be several times that you have to speak to them because they've been so inundated by the world that all they know about is the world. You can't give up. You sow that seed liberally. And you know that God is going to bring it to pass. Your part anyway, but the anointing will increase in you every time you give yourself over to ministering the word. If you work with people that are ungodly, you ask the Lord to give you a word that's going to pierce their heart. Because they're really looking. They're really looking at you. And they're saying, is there anything different in this world? Because they have no hope. If we could really realize that people have no hope, that they may come to work looking all, you know, ha, 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 and have their ugly joke and have their blah, 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 and all the stuff they tell and say and how they're lifting their life up. But they go home and they walk out and they hang their head because they're really miserable on the inside. And they're wondering, should they just go ahead and end it all and take their life? Because there is no hope for them. What is life about? Every man is searching. What is life about? And you are the light of the world. You are their light. You are placed there. You are placed where you're at to be the light of the gospel for them because they do not know. They have not heard because the church has been pushed back so far that their mouth has been shut. It's like there's a gag order and God saints are barely making it to church, barely living the gospel, barely walking it out themselves, allowing sin in their life. If you'll forget about you and you'll say, God, what do you want me to do? You'll forget about sin, I tell you what. Yeah. It won't be hanging around, holding on to you because you'll be too busy about the Father's business. But as long as you're busy about your business, you're going to have these bumps in the road because you're not doing what God's called you to do. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God that he's shaken us and awaken us out of our sleep and our slumber right now into his glorious liberty. That we're not going to allow the enemy. You know what, guys? You, how many guys in this place would allow somebody to come up behind them and tie a hanky around their mouth or wrap them up with tape when they're about half your size. <laughs> and you just stand there and go, oh, well, this must be what I have to endure. No. I know my sons, buddy, they'd take them down. You know? My boys, I mean, Benjamin's as sweet as he can be. But I wouldn't try that on him. <laughs> I wouldn't try that on him if I was bigger than him. <laughs> Don't let the devil come up behind you and wrap your mouth with tape. 
Because greater is he that is on the inside of you than he that is in the world that's ruling the world. He's not ruling. You have to realize it, people. He's not ruling the church. He's not ruling the saints of God unless we step over and we totally allow it because we're not giving ourselves to the Holy Spirit. He has no power over us unless we give it to him. Stop letting him blind you, deafen you, and gag you. Rise up in who Christ has made you. (laughs) Let's be the glorious church. Let's be the glorious church. I tell you people, we're there. We are on the brink of seeing the glory of God. Just every one of you say, I'm not holding on to my life. And Father, you say do this. You say let go of it. You say whatever you say I'll do. Wherever you go, I'll go. Here's my life. Take it all. I'm not holding on to anything, nothing, Lord. You put your finger on it, I let go. I let go. And we will see revival that will shake San Diego and will shake the nations of the earth, starting right in this place. The glory of God will come down in this place like has not been seen upon the earth as far as I've ever seen before. I've seen a little revival here and some revival there and some good things going in God, but not like what God has called this place to. Not like what God has called this place to. Not like the vision he gave me when I laid upon the floor and he took me and showed me what he's called this place to be. And I began to, I began to prophesy by the Spirit. I wasn't even in San Diego. I was in Mississippi. And as I laid upon the floor and I cried out to God, which was my habit every day, it's what I did. The Lord showed me how he was going to gather a people together in this place. And many have come. Many have come and many have chosen not to be that valiant people. Many have failed but have come back and said, I am going to go all the way. I'm going. Let us today be of one heart and one mind and one passion by the Holy Spirit, all speaking the same thing by the Holy Spirit and no longer allowing the enemy hold us back and let us arise. Let us arise and fulfill all that God has planned and purposed in his life. You don't want to be standing on the sidelines. You want to jump in right now. Anybody that's been holding on, let go and jump in. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to hold on. Let go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whereby given unto these. Let's go up and possess this. It's given to you, John. It's yours. Possess it. The Lord just says, possess it. It's yours. There is nothing that can prevent you. I don't care how old you are in God. There's nothing that can prevent you. You have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that have come and made their dwelling place on the inside of you. Now you have all power and authority. Rise up and possess. Rise up and possess. From this moment on, through the blood of Jesus Christ, right now, everybody that takes the blood of Jesus Christ and paints themselves and says, I received the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse me and wash me, you don't have any problems. You are holy, blameless, unrebukable, righteous, pure, set in heavenly places, co-laborer with Jesus Christ. Just walk it out. Now, that's it. It's simple. It's so sim- he did it. He did it. He did it all. He paid it all. He paid it all. 
He filled us so full of the Holy Ghost. Now just walk it out. Having escaped, completely done, escaped the corruption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is in this world. We have escaped through the blood of Jesus Christ. We've escaped the corruption that is in the world. And besides this, now, let's give all diligence. That's our part. Give all diligence. Yield ourselves completely and totally. It's a complete yielding of giving all diligence to add to this faith that he has given us in Christ Jesus. To add to the faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see. You know why? Because you stopped giving diligence. Because you allowed the enemy to put you in that little cradle and begin to rock you to sleep. And you're not diligent. You're not giving diligence. That lulling, you're just being lulled to sleep. Something has caught your eye that you think might be more important. You don't even, people don't even realize it. They don't even realize it. blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Don't forget for one minute. And I tell you what, if you don't feel like you have anything to praise the Lord about, because we must continually have praise upon our lips, so if you don't feel like you have anything to praise the Lord about, how about the blood of Jesus Christ that cleans you from all yes. sin? Just start right there. Yes. Just start right there. But as my mother would say again and again, count your blessings. They outnumber your troubles every time. So many Christian people look at their troubles and they get their focus on the problem. The devil's got you right where he wants you. Because there's no praise in looking at your problem. There's no thankfulness in looking at your problem. He's got you cornered. You were in checkmate. And the only way out is to begin to worship him and thank him for the blood. Start with thanking him for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleansed you from all sins, and now I don't have to go to hell. And spend eternity with Satan. Start there. And then start counting your blessings. Don't let grumbling and complaining come out of your mouth. Don't complain to your wife. Don't complain to your husband. Don't complain to your kids. Stop complaining. Unless you want to live in checkmate. Straight to hell, trumpet sounds, you lose. You don't go. Just clearly, I'm just laying it out. You don't complain. When a complaint rises up and it's going, wanting to come out of your mouth, you find a blessing. You find about how good God's been to you. You think about something to be thankful for, to worship the Lord for. Be like David and get radical, especially when there's a complaint there. You know what? If you will counterattack the enemy in your life, it's a battle. It's a warfare. We're not at a Sunday school picnic. He's made us valiant for a reason because we're in a battle. It's a battlefield, brother. Pastor Mark sings that. It's a battlefield, brother, not a rec rec recreation room. It's a fight, not a game. <laughs> run if you want to. Run if you will. But I came here to stay. I've, you know, my, one of my mom's favorite songs, I've come too far to turn back now. So, you know, Satan, you can pull all the tricks you want to, but I've gone too far with Jesus. I'm already set. I'm going. I'm going. Pull your tricks out of your bag. I'm going. I know. I know what's set before me. I know the glory. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm running to Jesus, not running back. I've come too far to look back. So that, a counterattack. The enemy tries to bring up that whatever. Get radical like King David. 
when the Ark of the Covenant was brought back into Jerusalem and he began to worship the Lord with all of his might, with all of his soul, with all of his power, with everything that was in him. He got, he got so radical in his worship, his wife got mad at him. You're supposed to be the king. You know, she was Saul's daughter. So she was raised as a princess. So she only knew the royalty. She didn't know that how Saul was, came from nothing and he was nobody. She didn't understand it. But see, David knew that God took him from among the sheep. Just a shepherd man. Just a shepherd boy. Just tending the sheep. And he set him up to a place. Because, because God looked. He was looking. His eyes were looking and he was trying. The hearts of men. And here's this little shepherd, young boy, just worshiping the Lord. He had his harp out there while he's were You know, I tell you what. If you can sing, be a worshiper. If you can't sing, you might have to close the bedroom door or whatever. You know, I figure when they're playing all the instruments and everything, nobody can hear me, so I just let it loose, you know? Amen. You know, but be a worshiper. Because God looked, and what was David? He was a worshiper. Did he have everything all together and it all figured out, and he was, like, going to just walk it out perfect the rest of his life? No, because we know he didn't. But he let God walk it out through him. And he just took off and he began to be that man God wanted him to be because God called him and anointed him. God's called you and he's anointed you. Let God walk it out with you. Just go. Go after that anointing. Go after that calling. Look for wherever you can spill over. And then back to counterattacking the enemy. It's worship like David worshiped. Man, the enemy will not like that one. He'll try another one. Because every time it comes against you, instead you counterattack the enemy and you worship. He'll go, I'm not messing with that one because, man, he gets over in the glory realms of heaven. He just gets lost in the presence of God. He's so determined to get out of that thing. Or she's so determined to not allow that again that I have no way to get in there to be like Job. I'm trying to get, you know, Satan is trying to get through this fenced wall of fire that God has around Job because of the righteousness. That's Father with us, the angels of the Lord, and camp around about those who fear him. We have the angels of the Lord all around us and camping around us. Unless we are opening the door, allowing. I tell you what, this is the greatest life to ever live. Amen. I wouldn't trade the life I've lived for the things of the <coughs> kingdom of God, for the biggest mansion, Amen. the Maseratis, <laughs> the limousines, all the stuff. Because you know what? It's all going to perish with the using. It all perishes with the using. True. This life I'm living will be in eternity. I want to get so close that it's written down, like everyone that's written here. I want to worship just like, you know, Mary had her time when she came and she poured that oil out on Jesus' feet, and it was for her, the burial of Jesus. And this is a memorial forever. Her worship, her worship, her simple worship. She wasn't doing it to be a memorial forever, but she was coming to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know what? If we all came into that place with that heart of Mary to worship before the Lord, if we all came with that heart, you're talking about, I tell you, Father's bending over and he's looking and he's, he's seeing. Will we be? Will we be that man and that woman that he wants us to be? Can he come and anoint us with his glory and his power and increase? on every hand because we're faithful to him. But I wouldn't trade this with all the tough spots and the tribulations and the things I've gone through to press into the realms of the kingdom. You know, I could have lived my own life. I could have done business. You know, and I could still do business, but I keep pushing it away because I don't want to be entangled with it. I want to be totally caught up in the realms of glory. So I don't want no stupid thing to
to hold me back from having all. Amen? Because right in the middle of that heart, you know, the enemy will still try his little tricks. So we must always continually stay vigilant and be diligent. I'm not on the page. I want to finish this. <coughs> Wherefore, the rather, instead of being blind and cannot see it far off and have forgotten that you purge from your sins, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give all diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if we do these things, you shall never fall. For if you give diligence, that's just it. It's being diligent and realizing that we have to be diligent. We're living in the world, but we're not of the world. We are not to have any fellowship with the world. And we have to continually be reminded. And so that's why we continually need to be in the Word building ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping ourselves in the love of God, keeping us, ourselves over here in this realm. It's diligence. It's easy because he said it is. My yoke is easy and my burden's light. He said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. If you're doing it your own way, you're not going to be satisfied. You're not going to be happy with anything. And you've got a big, huge, ginormous suitcase on your back and it's full of concrete and you're heavy laden and you're miserable and you're trying to figure it out and you're trying to fix it and you're trying to do it. You can't do it. But God can. But I tell you what, we're going to give it, we're going to do it His way. We can say we love Jesus, but He says, He that loves me keeps my commandments. And He says, if you don't keep my commandments, you're a liar. You're a liar. You don't love me. You love a Jesus that you want to make. You love a Jesus that you want to portray. It's not your way. It's his way. He's made the way. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The statues of the Lord are right, making wise the simple. It's the good way. God knows better than you do, believe it or not. He does. Like he told Job, the one he was bragging to Satan about, have you considered my servant Job, my righteous, holy servant Job? Then he cho told Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? You know, and Job's like, mm hmm mm hmm We don't know it all. So when things come out to try to get us to a place that we're going to figure it out, we need to say, no, Lord, I yield it to you because I don't know it all. You know. You know better than I know. You know, as parents, we've lived out life for a while, so we're trying to explain to our children that we know better than they know. But when they hit 11, 12, 13, 14, they are convinced. Their thinking caps come on. Everything begins to change. You know, you love the simplicity of children below 10. They're just so simple. And, you know, you just enjoy them. They, they, they enjoy the simplest things. And they're just totally surrendered to the mom and dad. I mean, you know, you have to spank them and guide them and lead them and direct them. But, you know, most of the time if you just talk to them, and explain to them a whole lot of things, you know, but parents get frustrated and they don't want to explain. I mean, those are, there are the times that, you know, they wake up bratty and, you know, they might be tired, they don't feel good, whatever, they're not having the best day. You know, if you pray in the Holy Ghost with them, it'll help a lot and get them healed. That'll help a lot. <clears throat> but, you know, parents go straight to the correcting and spanking and, you know, I was telling somebody the other day, I'm like, you know, talking to them about yelling at their kids and, and um, I said, <clears throat> yeah, I think every parent's fallen into that to where you yell at your kids because, you know, you're just like, <laughs> you know, what about no do you not get? Is it the letter N or the letter O? <laughs> Which part are you not getting? <laughs> do we need to go over the definition again? <laughs> Didn't I tell you not to do that? 
well, they forget in five minutes. And so we yell, and I'm like, and you're how old? And you're, you're losing self-control, and you're yelling at the child, and the child is what? Three, four, five, six? And he's lost, or she's lost self-control? And we're totally so upset at that child because it didn't listen, so we're yelling, and we've totally lost self-control. I'm like, who's wrong? You know, think about it. How many years do we have on them? And we're supposed to be in control, teaching them. And, we, and we're like, we forget, oh, the baby's two. Two. And they, I tell you what, two-year-olds, my daughter, when she was two, mercy, she did more than both the boys put together. I'm like, oh, Lord, girls, they're a handful. Fathers, take care of those girls. They need your attention, and they will get it one way or the other. They will get your attention because they need it, and they will get it one way or the other. So you just, you, they need their father's attention. It's the way it is. But, I mean, my daughter at two, I mean, she probably ate 24 um, tubes of lipstick. I could put up whatever I wanted to as high where I could not reach it. I had to get something to get it. And she would find a way up there to get it. And she saw me use Carpet Fresh one time. And I don't know if you know what Carpet Fresh is, but it's stuff that you sprinkle on the carpet, and it smells good, and then you vacuum it, and it makes the house smell so good. They don't do it anymore, I don't think. I haven't seen it for years. But she thought Comet would be a good Carpet Fresh. <laughs> and I come out of the kitchen, and I find the living room and the bedroom and the bed covered in, car in Comet. <laughs> Not once. I tried every place in the world to hide that comment. She found it. You know, but it was still my fault. It wasn't her fault. She was two. She was two. So you've got to be patient with those two-year-olds. You tell them no, but Carpet Fresh, Mom, you did it. And I'm like, this is not good, Carpet Fresh. But, I mean, she would, like, she double-timed me. I didn't even have to think about the boys. All I had to do was think about Kristen, what she was doing. But, Father, you know, are, are we allowing the self-control in our life? Somehow I got over there on that one. But every one of us, you know, we look at the children. And, it, you know, and it, I was talking about 11, 12, 13, 14-year-olds because I'd rather take a 2-year-old any day than that age. 11, 12, 13, 14 they're just trying to figure it out because all of a sudden everything's clicked on. The light bulbs are on. You can't convince them with, you know, the little pretend whatever it was that they wanted that was real expensive. You can't convince them with the cheap one. You have to get the real one. You know, designer clothes, if they see them, you know, or whatever. It's just they're thinking it through. And that ain't what you got, Mom. Uh, that isn't what, you know, and that's not how you do it. And, and they're just, it just, experiment comes to life. And it's a whole lot of talking and then explaining until you are exhausted. The two-year-old why is beautiful. It's beautiful. How many parents have gotten sick of hearing why at two years old? Why? Because this and this and this, and so you do. But why? But this and this and But why? But this, why? And you get to the next point, why? Get ready, Jason. <laughs> Lots of patience of why. But 11, 14, 11, 12, 13, 14, they're saying why. They're like, I've got this figured out. My brain, you know, all of a sudden, my brain works as good as you, yours. And then they calm down about 15, 16, 17, 18, but 21. They know everything better than you know. And that's, how, that's really how people are with God. And you don't realize it. I've got it figured out. I've got a handle on it. But his way is perfect, not ours. And we're perfect if we're following his way. If we're giving ourselves to follow after him and not walk in our own way, in our own ability. 
but totally over into the realms of his glory and his presence. Turn with me again to Psalms 34 where I began. You know, I don't know if I can even go here without preaching another hour because this just opens up a whole message that I was going to start with. But you know what? We'll just end with, oh, magnify the Lord with me and come let us exalt his name together because that is what's going to take you over into the realm of being able to walk out your life with Jesus. Just begin to worship, begin to praise, let the Holy Ghost take over and pray in the Spirit, worship in the Spirit, sing in the Spirit. Just begin. If you're stuck in prayer, you know, so many people, they have trouble praying past five minutes or whatever. They're just like, you know, I've prayed from Aunt Sally to China and back. And five minutes have only gone by. Just stop. Begin to worship. Just begin to worship the Lord and begin to thank Him for His goodness. Start there. Start your prayer there because that's prayer. Prayer is praise and praise is prayer. And we look in the Psalms and we see that and everybody should have been saturating themselves in the Psalms over the uh, holidays, over Christmas time. Saturating yourself in prayer and praise because that's what it is. It's a song. And so start there. Begin to worship Him and begin to thank Him. And start thanking Him for everything He's done for you. Be thankful. Be thankful for what He's given you. If you're aggravated with your child, begin to be thankful. You know, and you need to realize that, you know, some people don't realize that they're aggravated. So whatever that you're not thankful for, you're aggravated about, begin to be thankful. Begin to be thankful because God's blessed you. He's been good to you. You begin to look at how other people have it. You have so much to be thankful for. Number one, that your name is written down in the book of life. And you're going to live forever and ever. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Let me start at the beginning of that. I will, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. This is the keeping power right here. This is where to stay. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in thee, Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Together. Hallelujah. I sought the Lord and he heard me. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me out of all of my fears. And we could just say right there, we could just look right now at how the children of Israel, they walked away from God and they got themselves in tons of trouble. And then, in their trouble, they cried unto the Lord. And the Lord heard them, and he delivered them out of all of their trouble. And then, they went on, and they got into more trouble. They forgot the Lord, and they began to do their own thing again. Oh, man, is it repeated. There's nothing new under the sun, right? As the preacher said. All is vanity, vanity. There's nothing new under the sun. It just repeats itself. And then they forget the Lord and they get in all in, in their head, living their own life, doing their own thing, and they, they fall away from God. And in their trouble, they call upon the Lord. And the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all of their trouble. Again and again, it's so amazing how merciful God is. He's so merciful. There is nobody on this earth that is not able to serve Him because He does it all. And there's nobody that shouldn't want to serve Him because He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. Amen. His loving kindness and his tender mercies, they're brand new every morning. So if you messed up today, just get up in the morning and say, God, your mercies are new today. <laughs> so I'm going to forget about the past. I'm not going to allow the enemy to let me be condemned today and live in a, a, in a life of condemnation because in, the, in a life of condemnation, there's not confidence to do what God's called you to do. There's not confidence to live for him. There's not confidence to walk it out. So I'm going to be confident in you, Lord, because you said your mercies are new every morning, so I'm going to live in those new, new mercies today. <laughs> ah, Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every one of us are able to go up True. and possess the land. True. Every one of us are able to go up and possess the land. He's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
He's called you and he's calling you this morning. If you failed him, just the blood of Jesus Christ. If you don't know him, if you don't know this relationship to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and to give your life totally and completely to him. If you don't know this God that has set you completely free from the powers of darkness, delivered you out of this world and translated you over. You've been tra- if you haven't been translated, every saint of God has been translated over into the kingdom of his dear son. If you don't know this Jesus, if you've not been translated, if old things have not been passed away, and behold, all things are new, Jesus wants you to come to him right now. He's given you an opportunity. He's standing at your door and he's knocking. That's why you're here this morning. He's knocking at your door. And he's saying, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Hear of me. And be blessed. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. And he's saying, come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. If you're not living the life of a transformed, translated life, Jesus is knocking at your door and he's saying, come to me, lay it all down. He's saying, walk it up to the altar and lay it down. If you're holding on to things in your life and you've repeatedly allowed the sin in your life, Jesus is saying, come to me. I'll transform you right now. You can come and you can lay it down at the altar. I told on Wednesday night about my mother and how she told me that when she was young, she had a terrible temper. She was in everybody's business, causing havoc everywhere she went, just making everybody mad. And when she told me this, I absolutely didn't believe it because I was not raised by that woman. I was raised by a woman with patience, a woman that kept her mouth shut, a woman that served and served God. I was was blown away that she told me that. But she said, one day God said to her, you cannot fulfill the calling of God that I've placed upon your life, allowing that in your life. So I want you to give it to me. And she said, that day, when God put his finger on it, she walked up. She got up and she walked up to that altar. And she laid down her personality. She laid it down and she gave herself over to Jesus and she never picked it up again the rest of her life. My mom, when she got older, in her older years, she was a little bit more nervous, but I mean, she walked out her entire life totally different than that woman she described to me, that young woman. I never even, I I still can't believe that she was like that. But that's how fully Jesus will take things away from you. He will change your very personality because your personality is inherited from your parents and your grandparents. But we've been given the divine nature now. Now we're partakers of his divine nature. So we don't have to live in the past We don't have to live like grandma or grandpa or whoever didn't do right. We don't have to be that. We can lay it all down before Jesus. You can lay every sin that besets you down to Jesus right now and never pick it up again. Just call it done today. Call it done today. Say it's over. I give it to you, Jesus. Now I'm going to give all diligence to add to my faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance and just continue to go on adding and if you do these things you will never fall right diligence he's paid it all he's done it all now you give all to him and he'll take it and you'll live in this transformed life fulfilling the glory of God in this earth today I thank you Jesus for a church that's rising to be mighty in you If there's anybody here again that doesn't know Jesus, I want you to come. You've not been transformed. You're not living transformed. I want you to come. You've not been transformed. Old things are not passed away. All things have not become new to you. Jesus will do it right now, and he's beckoning at your door. Come to Jesus. He's your answer. Come to Jesus. Don't let... 
the enemy hold you back. Don't let some demon of hell hold you back. They have no power over you. We bind every lying power of darkness. I want to just give another minute here for you to come to Jesus. And if anybody wants prayer for any reason, you can come. Everybody stand with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, you're healing the Lord Tim right now. In Jesus' name. You're healing the Lord Tim. Father, body, soul, and spirit. Right now in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now. We thank you, Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 